Hey folks, welcome back to the Negative BQ channel. I know that I'm a good three weeks late on this. People have been asking for my thoughts on Maple Leaf Pro. And I'm probably going to do it to the point that maybe some of you want me to. I'm not going to get in, uh, into detail the way that I would an episode of Impact. But I did, uh, I did tell people I would give my thoughts. Um, I'll do it one night at a time. And to be frank with you, I haven't watched night two yet. It's um, it, it, So night one, I thought was a pretty good show. I didn't love it, but I thought it was a, a good enough show. It wasn't particularly easy for me to digest. It was one of those things where I kind of watched a couple matches and then I went and did something and, you know, got around to the third match after that and then the fourth match. And it, it actually took me a while to get through this. A lot of you guys and a lot of wrestling fans can just sit there and watch wrestling all day and watch wrestling for hours at a time. I just personally cannot. It's a it's an ADHD thing, to be honest with you. It's not so much a, a shot at wrestling. You know, the the only things that I can sit there and binge watch are episodes of Modern Family and the NBA or the WNBA. Like I can watch basketball, but um, aside from that, I need breaks. Even like even how some guys will sit there and just watch football all Sunday. I will watch the Chargers game. If the Rams are on, I'll watch them, and then maybe Red Zone from there and catch some highlights. You know, like I can't just sit there and watch all day. I'm just, uh, you know, ADHD thing, like I said. So to watch Impact, um, I'm still trying to catch NWA here and there. I'm trying to get into Rocky Mountain Pro a little bit, be, uh, to be honest with you. But just with uh, trying to catch those things and then trying to squeeze in Maple Leaf Pro, it was really difficult. Um, but as far as this show goes, um, I thought it looked a lot like Impact. Now, Scott Demore did some very good things for TNA and for Impact when he was around. He did. I criticized his on-screen role. He wasn't on screen here, which was great. I've criticized, criticized his on-screen role. I've um, criticized his ability to think outside the box. You know, I, I always felt that too many episodes of Impact just were just in this little box and real cookie cutter and by the numbers. And it is, it's not to say that they're not like that still to an extent. But I just didn't see a vision with Scott Demore under him. I just felt like for years the episode looked, felt exactly the same. Very little change. Very little uh, effort to present wrestling differently than other companies. So I was very interested to see what is Maple Leaf Pro going to look like. And it looked like a, a TNA pay-per-view. You know, I say a pay per view because it had a, it had a good crowd, good engaged audience. But you know, the camera angles, the way they shot the show, you could tell was the people who do impact. It was pretty, pretty obvious. I was thinking, okay, we're gonna see the yellow filter and we're gonna see shit like that. We didn't, we didn't get that. So, I do think the show looked pretty good. I thought it sounded pretty good. I thought he enlisted some good people to make the show professional. He had Mackenzie Mitchell do backstage, who's excellent. You know, once upon a time, she used to do TNA. She was very bad for the first six, seven months, and then started getting a lot better over time and becoming more natural and was really doing a good job at the time she was done. I thought TNA had a real diamond in the rough with her. Like if 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 she was someone they could have locked down long term, that would have been really good for the company. Um, they had Sam Laterna do the ring announcing. I'm very high on on Sam as a backstage interviewer. When she was around for this short time with TNA, I was saying that I, I wish she took Gia Miller's role because I think she's a lot better than Gia backstage. I think Gia. Actually does a good job on commentary when she does explosion. So I kind of wanted to see her move into that role. And I thought, to me, Sam is like the best backstage interviewer out there. I think she's really, really good. I think she's light years better than uh, Gia Miller is. As a ring announcer, she's okay. Um, she's a very pretty girl. 
but she makes them very. Uh, let me not use a too negative a word. She makes very weird faces when she's ring announcing. <laughs> so I thought as a ring of as a backstage interviewer, she's very very good. As a as a ring announcer, she's okay. It's a little it's a little whiny and over the top, but um, but I think she's uh, very talented. And if this if this promotion sticks around as a promotion, like if they ever get um, some kind of weekly TV or something like that, you know these these are the type of people you want to have around. Whether this becomes a TV program in Canada or is just an independent promotion that does eye pay per views. If you have Mackenzie Mitchell and Sam Laturn and in, tell you're doing very, very well. The commentary team was Scott's buddy, uh, good old Don Callis and Mauro Ranallo. Mauro um, was with WWE kind of towards the tail end of me watching. I will say when he took over on SmackDown, I was probably... Four months away from from being done with WWE, like I think I stopped about four months after that. And I always thought he did a good job. I heard him do some Bellator. Um, I heard him do some New Japan. There was a there was a small period of time that I actually watched that promotion. Never heard him on NXT. And then obviously he did the um, the main event, Kenny Omega and Rich Swan, that one time for uh, Rebellion. I believe was the Rebellion pay per view. And I've always thought he was very good. Uh, I thought he was really cheesy um, on on night one here. I would imagine on night two as well when I get around to watching that. I thought he was very cheesy. He's he's much like Tom Hannafin where he has a lot of predetermined one-liners and it just doesn't come off natural. The only difference between like him and Tom Hannafin is that this is his real speaking voice and Tom Hannafin's making up a voice. So that's kind of the difference. But there's a, there's a, actually a lot of similarities of them on commentary. He wasn't as good as I had hoped he was going to be for this program. And, you know, to give you guys actually a little insider knowledge here, TNA was actually trying to bring him in. Remember when he did the the Rich Swan Kenny Omega match, they were trying to bring him into the company and he, they were in talks with him. And, and this information is not out there. I'm putting it out there for you guys. They, they were in talks with him and he had interest in TNA because at the time, it was the pandemic and he could work from home. Cause you remember when he left WWE, I guess it was due to bullying and, or what he, he was calling bullying and, and, you know, mental health issues. So TNA was very uh, attracted to him at the time because he could do it from home or do it remotely. Or you, you know what I'm saying? Like that's kind of how they were doing commentary at the time. So they were trying to bring him on and obviously that fell through, but you know, Scott still has the connection with him. And you can you could kind of tell that this Maple Leaf was a version of what Scott kind of envisioned for TNA. You know, I, I think that's fair to say. And then Don Callis on commentary, I thought was pretty good. I didn't like him in, in Impact. I did it first. But then he st- really started resorting to a lot of bad comedy with Josh Matthews. Was doing a lot of flip-flopping of heel to baby face, depending on the match, which... Matt Raywald does the same thing. Uh, not as bad, but he w- he would just one match. He's he's just a heel. The next match, he's a baby face, and then he's completely impartial. It got really old to me after a while, and I I thought the combination of him and Josh Matthews got very annoying over time. But I thought he did a pretty good job here. So I, I thought he was more of a standout than Mauro Ranallo was. But overall. You know, just like I said with Sam Laterna and Mackenzie Mitchell, if this is the commentary team you're able to have for your show, like you're doing pretty good. You know, you, you you've got you've got the personnel to make this more than just an indie show. Because like I brought up that I, I've been watching Rocky Mountain Pro a little bit, and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm probably a lot of you aren't, but I'm a Vince Russo guy. I I like Vince Russo a lot. I love listening to his podcasts, <laughs> so I want to see. Vince Russo in action because he he books that show. You know, it's just a, a small indie promotion, 2,000 viewers on YouTube, but he books it. So I, I just want to, you know, get into it. But they're so far behind being a television program. Like they're on YouTube, 
you know, but they're like way fucking behind what a what a TV program should look like. They they don't come off like, you know, M- NWA or MLW. You know, they're, they're come off like a fucking indie show. This came off like a TV show. So I would say I'd probably have interest in it if it um, if it had a weekly like YouTube show. You know, obviously if it's on in Canada, I can't watch it in the states. But if they if they have some kind of free streaming show and it was an, an hour long, I could probably watch it. So, you know, for me, two hours is kind of kind of the sweet spot watching wrestling. Three is always you're you're getting into my ADD very bad. Like, uh, you know, the, the the closer you get to three. But the matches here, um, we're talking night one here. The first match was Josh Alexander with Stu Grayson and El Fantasmo, and they beat Trevor Lee, Rocky Romero, and Alex Zane. So here's something that's tried and true in pro wrestling. If Rocky Romero is on your team, you will lose the match. I have never, ever, and I'm not exaggerating, seen him win a match. He was one of the few people that Impact brought in that didn't beat one of their guys. Like he wrestled Rohit and and Rohit beat him. Usually Impact brings someone in from the outside and they beat their guys. So and and you know he wrestles on AEW sometimes and I've I've never seen him. I mean obviously I don't watch AEW now, but he was around for a while when I was watching and this. I've never seen him win ever. So uh, Stu Grayson is someone that I like because when I was watching AEW, I was a, a really really big Dark Order fan, like in the in the early days of the Dark Order. He would be, I think, a pretty decent addition to to TNA. You know, I don't think that's going to happen, but he's one of the guys I, I wouldn't mind seeing around. Trevor Lee was unrecognizable with his short hair. The crowd didn't really pop for him. Um, he is someone that I've always thought was very overrated. I'm not saying he is not talented. Anyone you see wrestling on TV has some degree of talent. I obviously could not do what they do, but they also obviously could not do what I do as well. So that's why it's okay for us as fans to criticize wrestlers because, you know, like I I was in this thread on Facebook, one of my favorite pastimes as a criticized Bronny James. And someone's like, well, you couldn't do what he does. I'm like, oh, he, he couldn't do what I do. Like this motherfucker wouldn't last two days in the military. I could assure you, you know, so. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on from that. But Trevor Lee, to me, is very overrated as a wrestler. Very overrated as a personality. When he was with TNA, you know, he won the X Division Championship a few times. But people wanted to see him, like, pushed. And I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't see it, personally. I, I just don't think he stands out that much. And I, I went to an episode of Impact in the Orlando Impact Zone. And I was... I wasn't ringside. I was, um, I guess I was in the little, I think I was like, a, like in the VIP seating and I was next to the entrance ramp. And I remember he would come down and he'd just have these, I mean, paper thin trunks. Like he wouldn't have a reg- regular wrestling trunks. They're like this thin nylon. And his junk is just like hanging out, you know? And then, you know, he'd go in the ring and do a leapfrog, look like a flying squirrel. So, to me, he's really under, uh, overrated. Alex Zane, he did some 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 impact dates and thought he was. I, I thought he looked like really good. I, I wasn't impressed here. He has this whatever. He's the one with this like Taco Bell gimmick or something, right? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't write it down. I think he's the one that's some sort of Taco Bell gimmick. Like I wasn't. I wasn't feeling it. But this was a pretty good opening match and he used a lot of some of the same people you know, from night one and night two josh alexander being uh one of them so uh but yeah but the team of josh Stu and el phantasma won but el phantasma was very very good uh you you knew who was going to win this match from the very beginning i mean it was very very obvious uh qt marshall marshall wrestled uh bupinder Gujar. Bupinder is clearly someone that Scott Demore sees something in, but I don't know that anybody else does. Like, there's something very much missing with this dude. Uh, probably his inability to cut a promo. You know, that's that's always a thing. I thought 
they try to do the impossible in, in Impact and make him a babyface. And no one has really been able to make a strong Indian babyface before. It's very easy to just say, hey, uh, Indian wrestler, heel. Especially when they have very, very strong accents. And I thought Scott Moore tried to do something that was that that wasn't going to work. You know, if you guys don't remember, he was one of the original members of the Desi Hit Squad. It was Rohit Raju, um, Roha Raha, whatever the dude's name is, and uh, who was on this show later, and Bupinder Gujar. And there was one fourth guy, but we never saw him on on Impact in any way. He was a he was a smaller dude, but we never. He he was never on, and Bupinder actually wrestled as part of the Desi Hit Squad a couple times on Impact. It was well well before he he was signed and the babyface that we saw on TV before Raj became a part of the group. There was one time where Gama Singh brought him in, and he wrestled, and 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 Gama Singh kind of said, "Oh well, he might be a new member of the group," and. It was a, a match in Canada where the referee with no legs, he he was the ref for it. It was kind of silly, and then the match was over, and then we never saw Bupinder again. And then they had a Twitch show where the Desi Hit Squad was Bupinder and... Um, God, I can't remember what his name was. Let, let me not fuck up his name again. Um, Rohan Raja, where, you know, that's what he is known. He, whatever he was... Um, when he was with TNA, I just, it, it's on the back of my mind, but I, I can't quite nail it. But there was one Twitch show where they were the Desi hit squad, but Scott sees something in him. I would not be shocked if his contract wasn't renewed with, with TNA at the top of the year. There's, there's just a lot missing with him. I know that he was, I've been told he's been advised to come up with a different finisher. And I've, I'm always critical of the spear as it is, but that gargoyle spear he does, I don't think is a good finish. And I've been told that he's been asked to consider something different, and he he never did. So I just I don't think that he is long for the company. But for a company like this, or again, whether it's a TV show or whether it's an indie promotion, I think he would he would do okay for that. I just don't think he is. Uh, good for TNA. But he wrestled QT Marshall with Harley Cameron. Um, Harley Cameron is one of the hottest women in wrestling. That There's not even a, a debate on that. But her as a character is very bad. She can cut a promo, but she... I mean, she has the ability to cut a good, cut a good promo, but she doesn't because her she has a very silly, um, over-the-top gimmick. And just as a character, I don't think she she comes off good on TV. Some people find her funny. I really don't. Um, she looks like a, a two million bucks, but yeah, she's she's just very very goofy to me. And uh, QT wins the match here. Sky Demore keeps up the tradition of putting AEW over TNA guys, so we'll see that throughout the show. There was uh, Kylie Ray versus Lainey Luck. Uh, this is a four-way: Laney Luck, Taylor Rising, and uh, Aurora Tevez. We knew Kylie Ray was going to win this match. I mean, come on! And it's always good to see Kylie on TV. She looks incredible for someone who had a child not that long ago. So uh, it, it's good to see her in any kind of promotion. I was familiar with Laney Luck because she, I believe, wrestles out of Chicago, and she used to do a lot of when I was living in Illinois, outside of St. Louis. She would do a lot of the indie shows there. So some of the shows that I went to, um, she was she was a part of. And if you guys actually don't remember, she was on the pre-show of Bound for Glory years ago when they were in Chicago. This was the the Shotzi Blackheart versus Madison Rain night or match. I think that was a that was either on um, on Impact or Bound for Glory pre-show. But if you guys remember, Shotzi Blackheart wrestled, but Lainey Luck did as well. I think she was either on the pre-show or she was on the because even back then when they had a they had a um, pay-per-view they would still do the Twitch shows as opposed to now where it's like okay it's bound for glory we're not doing a TNA Plus show this month like back then they were doing the the, the TNA Plus 
whatever they called it back then, Impact Plus and Twitch. They were they were like giving us three pay per views, which was like way too much wrestling. But Lainey Luck, she did something around Bound for Glory when they're in Chicago. I just don't quite remember what show it was on. But she's she's not bad. Taylor Rising, I'm very high on. She did. She's done episodes of Impact as a jobber, um, and she wrestles on NWA right now. I think she's very very good. Like when I've seen her in NWA matches, I'm like, man, she would have made she would have made a very good knockout in my opinion. But uh, they didn't see her that way. And, and Aurora Tevis, I'm not super familiar with. But Kyla Ray uh, won the match, and it, the the finish was very bad, where she accidentally fell down on I think uh, Lainey Luck hit her finish or something, and then Kylie Ray kicked her and then fell on the girl who was down and pinned her. It was very bad. There was an IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team match. It was the Jet Setters, and they they won, uh, taking on the Rogue Squadron, which was Sheldon Jean and Rohit Raju, which. I think would be an incredible TNA tag team. Uh, El Reverso and Aiden Prince was on one team, and then Brent Banks and Johnny Swinger. I'm not going to bullshit you guys. I didn't watch the match because I was told the match was kind of a waste of time. That it was very silly. That um, there was potential when you have Kushida and Kevin Knight. Kevin Knight, I think, is real, real fucking good. There's a lot of potential if you have Kushida and Kevin Knight and then Sheldon Jean and Rohit in a ring. Like that's that sounds really good. Aiden Prince is also very good. El Reverso is good, but he's he's a little bit of a comedy character. Uh, Brett Banks, I believe, did some um, explosion matches or something back in the day for for Impact. And then Johnny Swinger, who clearly Scott Demore is a fan of. The minute Scott Demore was gone. They got rid of Johnny Swinger on Impact, um, but I, I was just told this match was was pretty silly, so I I had no interest in that. I had no problem fast forwarding. There was a tables match: Bully Ray versus Raj Desi, uh, formerly of uh, WWE. Uh, what the hell was his name there? I'm drawing blanks this morning. You guys know who I'm talking about, though. This was not very good at all. It kind of took forever to get started. And and again, we're watching this and we're like, okay, we're seeing Scott Demore favorites. This is a match that if Scott was running TNA right now, we would see on TNA. He would, he would, we would still have Bully Ray around. Because again, Scott is gone, Bully Ray gone. Like there was there's a a, a pattern here. Raj Desi, I don't think the current TNA would bring him on. I don't think I don't think that's gonna happen. I think if Scott was around, this motherfucker would 100% be on impact right now and, and maybe even have a championship. I, there's no doubt in my mind. So this match was like something that we would see on a Scott Demore version of TNA Impact. I didn't think it was very good. Uh, the match finished when, when Raj chokeslammed him through a table and then QT Marshall randomly comes down and drags uh he takes out Raj Desi and drags him onto the table and then the goofy referee not the goof referee from impact but just another goofy dude gets up the commentary team was even like hey he didn't see it so he can't call the end of the match but sure enough he just rang the door he rang the doorbell rang the bell and and gave him the match and then um Bupinder Guzer comes down and you know there's a post match angle and then Bupinder was next to Raj Desi, and I I couldn't believe the size difference. It it just kind of shows you that WWE brings a lot of people who are, I mean, really built like men, you know. Um, and Bupinder, who who we see him on TV, and we don't see we don't see him as a small guy, you know. We're not we we don't feel like we're watching someone who's you know five seven five eight or something like we we feel like we're looking at a, a taller dude. I mean, he was uh, Raj Desi completely dwarfed him. Is that the right terminology or is, am I, do I got that backwards? He was a lot bigger than him. Let me put it like that. But I'm really surprised they didn't try to put them together in a tag team. And then Giselle Shaw wrestled Miu, uh, Miu Yamashita. This was, this was pretty good, but I mean, I, I love Giselle Shaw's matches. I'm always really shocked that they just didn't, get behind her in impact 
And maybe that was because Scott just didn't want to, you know, maybe he didn't want to play favorites, but I'm just, I'm very shocked that she never had a knockouts title run, which I think would have been a really good run. Never a knockouts tag team title run. Like there was a lot they left on the table with. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to see her, you know, get a little shine here and and have a very good match with uh, Miyu Yamashita. And I'm not usually into the the Japanese wrestlers, the Japanese style of wrestling, but I thought I thought this was good. So Giselle gets the win. And then uh, the main event for this night was. Uh, Kanosuke, uh, Kanosuke Takeshita, Jesus Christ, Kanosuke Takeshita versus Mike Bailey. And it was as good as advertised. Everyone knew this was going to be a, a really, really good match. And I think this was a very good way to to end the night. I think that's a, a good main event. I think it's the kind of main event that you want to have on a show like this. I thought the show was a little hit or miss coming up to it, especially the tables match. Um, I can't speak on that. I, IGW, who, who cares? J- IGWP, is that what it is? You know I don't watch Japanese wrestling. I didn't watch the match. I, I, mean, I assume it wasn't that good because I was told it wasn't good. So when you've got that, you've got the table match, you're kind of like, all right. You know, you're just, you're just kind of chugging along at this point. But then you get a main event like this, and, um, you know, they put on a hell of a show. We knew that Mike Bailey was not going to win this match because <clears throat> Takeshita's um, championship was on the line, his, his AEW championship. I don't remember off the top of my head. I have to go back here into the notes. The uh, international championship. They have so many titles. It's crazy, and I don't know what's what's what over there. But once once that was announced, you're like, okay, Takeshita is going to win this match. But you know, it, it was Mike Bailey can have a good <laughs> excuse me could have a good match with anybody. It's just the promos that are bingo hall level. Um, I think he actually cut a promo here. They, he did. They showed a, a promo or video package beforehand where he sounded pretty good. So I, I just don't understand why on Impact we get the version of him that we do because it seems like outside of Impact because I've seen him cut promos in Japan and they sound fine. So yeah, it, it, it just kind of just kind of weird, but. But if he can book main events like this, he's going to be in good shape. So overall, decent night of wrestling. Again, it wasn't incredibly easy for me to digest as a TV show. It was it was just a little long. There were some matches I didn't. The commentary was was a little, little corny for me. But there's there's a lot of good elements of this. It reminded me a little bit of the very very early days of AEW, kind of before Dynamite was a thing. They kind of had a couple pay-per-views and there was a bit of hunger. There was there was an aura of hunger amongst it. And I saw that a little bit with this. I would just say, don't try to look like TNA. Present wrestling a little differently, you know? And, and I'll bring this up again on another podcast because I, I have an interview coming up or someone's interviewing me. If you guys ever watch Global Force Wrestling, like the Jer- Jeff Jarrett, like his little DVD set, that is an example of presenting wrestling differently. That was like nothing else that's on TV. And that's what I've challenged TNA to do. Uh, I've challenged anyone to do that, you know? But this was this was definitely like an episode of, of Impact. It was like an Impact pay-per-view. So I, I would really challenge Scott someone who just comes off to me like he's just not outside of the box thinking, which I think is a lot of the reason he lost his job with TNA. Just present wrestling differently, dude. Like, seriously. But that's all I got, folks. Um, when I get through MLP Night 2, I will, um, I'll I'll probably review it a lot quicker because I think I've given a lot of my general thoughts of Maple Leaf Pro here. Um, but I, I will get into Am I missing a match? I feel like I'm missing a match. I I am missing one. Uh, Rohan Raja, who I spoke of earlier, I I completely went past this. He wrestled Jake something. And 
one thing that I thought was really interesting is that this is Jake something in a completely different company. This is not him on Impact. He um, he is announced again as just Jake something. And I didn't know if it was like a TNA thing or what, but he's never given. He's, he hails from here. He weighs this. I mean... He purpose it's it's like it's a clear now he is purposely trying to come off as the most generic wrestler possible. And there is a there is a ceiling for this dude that I think he can get to. He's just not. I don't know if he does not want to get to uh, want to get there or what. I have no idea, but he comes out generic music, generic entrance, a generic guy. Generic everything. So I was kind of I'm just I'm just kind of disappointed in this dude when I see him on screen. Like I just there's so much more that I want to see. And then Rohan Raja, as I kind of said, he was part of the Desi Hit Squad. I liked him better than Raj Singh. I thought I thought they kind of took a took a hit when he left. And um, he you know he was part of NXT UK I believe. He he's not a huge name, but. Scott Demore says, "Hey, this dude, um, this dude was champion, or he wasn't champion, but he, he's a champion here. But this dude was in NXT. He's got the WWE rub. Let's put him over TNA guys. You know, like that's that's just Scott Demore booking for you. And uh, he is the PWA champions Grail. So they 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 had different titles on here, and I didn't know what any of them were. I don't." I couldn't tell if they were from other companies, from this company, what what they're trying to do. But uh, that match, that match was okay. I just was, you know, again, just kind of disappointed. Like Jake, something we just don't see him take the next step. But it just doesn't see seem like he he wants to take that next step because there's there's things that I think he has control over, and we just don't see it. So yeah, sorry for for skipping that. But um, again, w- as I was saying when I talk about night two. It'll probably be a lot quicker um, because I've gotten most of my thoughts uh, out of the way regarding Maple Leaf Pro, but we will run down that card. I'll give, give you my thoughts. And for right now, that'll do it for me. I'm your boy BQ. I am out. Peace.